This Navica webinar will cover adding listings as well as editing listings. This will include uploading photos, uploading of documents, adding a listing, saving it as a partial, as well as uploading photos prior to submitting your listing. To add a listing, on the left hand menu we are going to choose Add Listing. At this point you will choose your property type. Depending on your MLS board, you may have more property types than I have here to choose from. You may have uh, ad listing from tax. Um, everyone will have ad listing and ad listing as a comparable. Adding a listing as a comp is simply putting that listing in as new and sold at the same time. They are treated just like every other listing. They will be available for everyone to see. They will count towards stats and things like that. So if you ever have a question about what's allowed in your MLS, you should always check with your local MLS board. As well as when I go into adding this listing, the fields in this particular demo site may be a little different than the fields in your local MLS area. So it's not going to look exactly the same, but the functionality is the same regardless of where you're at. So we're just going to click on the Add Listing screen for Residential and it will come up with all of your fields. If you are a broker or staff, you will choose the agent you are adding the listing for and at that point you just start to fill in the information. Um, for your property type, make sure you choose the appropriate property type if you have a selection there. Prices, no commas, no dollar signs, just the numbers. When you get to a date field, when you click on that date field, the calendar will automatically come up for you to choose your date. If there is a drop down and there is a field that you need added to the drop down, your local board office can add those for you. So once again, you will simply go through and fill out all of the information about the property. When you get down to um, the remarks directions, we will tell you how many characters each field takes. And as you're typing in that information, your characters will count down for you to tell you how many characters you have left. When you get to the features section, the number in parentheses will tell you the maximum number you can enter for each individual section. Um, some people, some boards will have something like type style, and you may have one selection, whereas for interior features, you can check them all. So fill in all the information there. Any fields that are mandatory will be denoted by saying required field. Once you've entered all of the information, at the very bottom of the input screen, if you have a co-list officer agent, if that's something your MLS uses, you can add that. And you can also add your photos prior to saving as a partial or before you submit the listing. So to add the photos, we're going to click on Add View Photos. One thing to mention is when you're adding photos to a listing prior to it being submitted, all you can do is add the photos. You cannot change the order. You cannot add labels and remarks. However, as soon as you submit the listing, there will be an Add Photos button. And there you can then go to the tab to reorder or add your labels and remarks to your photos. But before you submit the listing and make it live, all you can do is attach the photos to that particular listing. So you're going to click here to choose your photos. I'm going to just hold my shift key down and click the first one and click the last one and that will highlight everyone in between or you could hold your control key down to select individual photos. But now we're going to say open and you could have also drag and drop them there. Um, choose your main view, then submit your photos. Your photos will then process and go to the very bottom. At that point you can delete them, but that's really all we've got we can do, so I'm just going to close that. If you've entered all of the information and you're ready to submit the listing and make it live, you're going to click Submit at this time. If you forgot to fill in any mandatory fields, when you click Submit, the screen will come up and tell you on the left what fields you forgot to enter. Let's just pretend I didn't forget everything and let's just say all it says is carport is required. 
At this point, I click on Carport is Required, and the page will scroll directly to that field. So you don't have to find the field you forgot. Just click on the field name on the left, and the page will scroll directly to that particular field for you to enter your information. Once you submit the listing with all the information complete, it will give you an MLS number. There you will also have the ability to go in and add photos, documents, etc. You can also save that listing as a partial. When you save a listing as a partial, to retrieve those partial listings, you will go to My Listings on the left-hand menu. There you will have a tab that you can click on to find your partial listings. For any partial listings that you have previously saved, you can finish that partial, you can remove it, or you can view the full display. The full display, when you click that, is an easy to read screen with all of the fields that you've entered information for. You've already typed in and saved that information, and you simply saved it as a partial, which means it's not been made a live listing. But when viewing this full display, you could have entered all the information, saved it, at that point, you can't really make a typo because you've already typed it all in and saved it. You just haven't, quote, submitted it yet. But at the very bottom of this page, you can email this uh, to your seller and have them sign off on the accurate accuracy of the data before you make it live. So if that's something you're interested in, when you save a listing as a partial, just go to My Listings, Partial Listings, and there you will have a button to view or email that full display. Like I said before, when you're ready, just click Finish Partial, finish adding your information, and click Submit. Back to My Inventory, under My Listings on the left-hand menu, you can select your property type, your status. If you're a broker or office staff, you can pick the agent, then say Get Inventory to view that particular agent's inventory. On each individual listing, wherever you see your listings in the system, you will have an Edit Listing button. The status changes you will see in this demo may not be the exact same status changes you have in your local MLS, but when you click on Edit Listing, any status changes will be listed at the top. So you may have PIN listing, you may have contingency, you may have under contract. So whatever your MLS uses, those will be listed there temporarily off the market, rent if it's a rental property and you need to quote market as rented, if it's a sale listing may be an option for you, um, this particular board I have to pin it, then I'll have sale listing, withdraw from market, then we have our general maintenance changes, change listing which will bring up the input form to you, for you to make any changes, uh, for example to change the price, to change something in the remarks, if a listing is going to expire in the next week or so and you have a contract extension, then you would want to go into Change Listing to change that expiration date. Now once a listing is expired, you would have the set, you may, depending on your board if they allow it, you may have a status change of Bring Listing Back to Active. Once there's a letter after the MLS number other than A, going into Change Listing and making changes to the, to the data, will not change the status. You will need to use your status changes to bring that listing back to active. Add edit virtual tour videos. We don't host your virtual tours. However, if you have them on YouTube or through a virtual tour company, something like that, and you have a web address or a URL to view that tour, we give you the ability to put those links or URLs to your tour on your listing under Add Edit Virtual Tour Video. And you can have two links or tours um, on each listing there. Reposition on Map. If you ever find your listing is not mapped correctly, you will choose Reposition on Map to move it. You may have to zoom in or out to find where it should be, but just take the little pin, drag it, and drop it to the correct location. Once you get near the correct location, you can start to zoom in. And the more you zoom in, the more accurately you can position that particular property. You can also hover over the word road on any of our maps, change that to an aerial view, 
and that will allow you to position the proper the um, dot directly on the property if you want to get that specific. At the very bottom of this page, there is an apply to apply that change. Transfer listing co-list update may be an option if you are a broker or staff to transfer a listing or change a co-list office or agent. Edit showings allows you to access the Navica showing manager to set up the showings for that particular listing if that's available in your MLS, as well as scheduling a showing. You can add an open house to the open house calendar, which is located under news and events by clicking on open house under edit listing and then the add open house tab at the top. There is a question there for private and that will control whether or not that open house is sent out to third party websites such as Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, etc. So if it's a Realtors luncheon and you're just going to have it for your fellow Realtors, you do want to check private. If it's a public open house and you want it to be sent out, if your board sends those out to other websites, then you do not want to check private. Then we have our photo maintenance and uploading and deletion of documents. To upload photos to an existing listing or to edit your photos in any way, you will go to Photo Maintenance under Edit Listing. There you can choose to upload more photos or upload your original first batch of photos. You can upload a total of 45 photos to every listing. Your photos can be portrait or landscape. Simply click here or drag and drop to select your photos. Select the photos you want to upload open. If you have yet to choose a main view, check main image for one of those. You can remove the photo if you do not want to process that particular photo. You can also rotate if you find that the photo needs rotating. Then once we click submit, the green bars will go across the photos. They will move to the bottom. They are now processed and live and ready to be viewed on the listing. If you need to reorder your photos, simply click on the Reorder Photos tab. If you would like to change the main view, simply drag and drop the new main view to the main view slot. Your additional photos will be at the bottom. Drag and drop them into the order you want them to be in. And when you're done, click Save Order. There's a Photos, Labels, Remarks tab that will allow you to type in labels below each photo and up to 200 characters of remarks to the right to describe that photo. Once you've entered any labels and or remarks, you will click Submit to save those. If after processing your photos, you've discovered that they need to be rotated, you can go to the Rotate Photos tab and there click the photo to rotate at 90 degrees. Once it's in the correct orientation, save rotation here to the right. If you would like to delete your photos, click on the Delete Photos tab, go through and click the photos you want to delete or you can drag and drop them here to the right. Once the photos you want to delete are in the blue box here to the right, you would hit the Delete tab button Sorry, to delete those. You can also build a QR or quick response code that will go to that listing on your board's public site whenever it's taken, um, when that image is captured with a smartphone or a QR code reader. And you would just say use this to process that particular QR code. So back to my listings. Under edit listing, the last thing we have is the uploading of documents. The documents you have to choose from are determined by your local board. You can upload one document for each slot. So one lead based paint, one appraisal, one additional features, etc. The easiest and best thing to do is when scanning or saving your documents to scan all of the pages into one PDF file. That PDF file will need to be under five megabytes. So if you're having a problem with that, you may need to lower the quality um, of scan on your scanner, uh, lower the dots per inch, set to a lower quality, uh, they all sort of have different verbiage there, but, but whatever setting that will decrease the file size prior to scanning. If you can get them in a PDF file, you want to use option two here on the right. Click to choose your file. Find that file on your computer 
and double click it to select it or highlight it and open. If you cannot save them as a PDF file, you would want to scan page one of, for example, your lead based paint. Scan page one, save it as a JPEG. Scan page two, save it as a .jpg file. Scan page three, save it as a .jpg or .jpg. Then under option one, you would choose all the pages of that seller's disclosure, one at a time, and then upload now. However, most people use option two, so choose your file, find your PDF, upload PDF. There it will verify that what you're doing. You click submit and it will then say your document has been saved for the system for processing. They take just a few minutes to process and then they will be available to view on your listing. So when you go back to my listings, once they have processed, there will be an icon here with all your other little icons that looks like a piece of paper. Let me just refresh and see if that's processed yet. It has not, but it would show up right in here and it would be a piece of paper icon that indicates there are documents on the listing for you to view. So that concludes the Navica Ad Listing, Edit Listing, and Photo Maintenance webinar.